Can you say, what is an independent laboratory? Uh, that's a Stanford invention that now has been copied and, and rediscovered by more universities and people. It was, it was created out of the physics uh, department as a way to try to manage research projects that might be larger in scale than an individual lab in a, in a small building could be. And so the Hansen Experimental Physics Lab, which is the current name, <clears throat> was originally founded as the microwave laboratory, as a dream of W.W. W. Hansen. His idea was the government could sponsor the laboratory scale research program of a joint research of a number of faculty with a shared interest and it would be easier to manage that shared research interest in a productive way. During my term as Dean of Research, there were reasons that we split the lab into Hansen Experimental Physics Lab and Ginston Lab. The, the Hansen Experimental Physics Lab became focused on NASA-sponsored space-based larger scale missions. So, good How have the independent laboratories affected Stanford? <clears throat> They were recognized quite early as being something special at Stanford because they allowed multiple schools and multiple departments to do joint research in an area of common interest. We had an external review panel review uh, the la laboratories. Uh, Ray Weiss was the chair of that panel. And, and Ray came away saying, you know, MIT needs to do this now. <laughs> we need this kind of structured MIT. We don't have it and we're missing it badly. He said, you guys do things we can't possibly do. You work across engineering and science as if there's no boundary there. We don't do that. I can't do a joint project with a mechanical engineer like a Dan DeBray, but we can. And so they recognized that interdisciplinary research was really an important thing to learn how to do and to build it into your structure so that it was part of what you did without having to reinvent it all the time. Now it's been reinvented at Stanford too, more rediscovered would be the way to say, more than once. And so the Hennessy administration spent a lot of time talking about interdisciplinary research. They were in the process at that time of moving the school from San Francisco to Palo Alto. The situation in San Francisco had been that the clinicians were preoccupied with their practices. They didn't have much time for teaching and hardly any time for research. So it was a very good kind of school of its kind, but it was not what I was looking for. I was looking for a place that put a lot of emphasis on research and where there were the, the rich interdisciplinary possibilities. But I was tremendously impressed with Wally Sterling, with whom I became later a close friend. He had the courage to make the move. Wally saw the huge possibility of having the medical school together with the rest of the university. He knew the university was great in the hard sciences and the behavioral sciences, and it was, it was great, great in physics and strong in engineering, great in chemistry. So he thought, my God, if you could get the, if you could develop biology, which we hadn't done very much of up to that point, and you could get this whole gamut of the problems that medicine touches on, you could have the greatest university in the world. There were very few universities that had a close connection between the medical school and the rest of the university. He saw that opportunity and had the courage to see it through, including raising the money. It was a very difficult proposition, and uh, nobody expected it from him. He had not been a scientist, he had not been a great mm -hmm. scholar, right. but he had a vision. Mm -hmm. He had a vision. When the move was planned, one of the first things to, that was planned was to actually build up the basic sciences. Now, bi biochemistry didn't exist as such. The medical students doing their preclinical years down here actually took biochemistry from a chemistry professor. The urging of Henry Kaplan and Avram Goldstein, they settled on approaching Arthur Kornberg. Now, Arthur Kornberg was, I think, at the time, probably considered in the top five biochemists in this country. So it was a plum that they were going for. Arthur Kornberg had been recruited to Washington University to become professor of microbiology. Uh, he was the head of that department, but there was no other faculty. 
And so he spent about two or three years recruiting an entirely new group of faculty. We were all biochemists or structural biochemists. None of us were microbiologists. Arthur Kornberg was invited to come and make his visit, recruiting visit, to give a lecture. And I remember him telling me before he left, when we were in St. Louis, he said, I am not interested in moving. I've just built up this department. It's going to be a great department. But I have to go because my good friend, Henry Kaplan, has urged me to at least to show up and consider it. He came back very enthusiastic about what was happening at Stanford. The move into these new facilities on right on the campus uh, with a lot of very interesting scientists already in place in the chemistry department, in the biology department. And so when he came back, he was a changed person. He was very enthusiastic. He said, I will not accept this appointment at Stanford unless you all come with me, all meaning all of the young assistant professors he had recruited to the department. So we had many, many evenings over beer and food and snacks discussing, should we, should we not? And ultimately, we all agreed that it would be great for each of us uh, to come to Stanford as well. Uh, there was a ferment. The whole feeling it was that this was an exciting new development. Stanford was stepping out to do something that was unusual. And here was an opportunity for us to come as a unit, and I'll amplify that for a moment, uh, and, and be part of that new process. So the, what was unique? The unique was that a department of seven people flourishing at Washington University in St. Louis moved en masse, all seven, to become the new Department of Biochemistry. 